Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking another look at the Elsa Radeon RX 580 8GB SP2048. This is an absolutely astonishing card for somewhere in the region of about £50. Absolutely unbelievable. Keep watching to find out more. So on today's video we'll be taking a look at the Elsa Radeon RX 580. This is a 8GB card. This is actually the SP2048 variant which is somewhat of a cut down version from the full fat RX 580 and shares a lot of similarities with the RX 570. But having said that you can pick this up at the moment on AliExpress for a ridiculously cheap amount of money considering this is effectively a brand new card. There are signs of refurbishment on this particular card, as there are on a lot of these on the market at the moment. But again, around about £50, brand spanking new, with a warranty, I don't think you can go too far wrong. And for me personally, I couldn't go too far wrong, because this was kindly sent to us by Ugly Bob. So thanks once again, Ugly Bob, for sending this in to us. An absolutely cracking card, and it came very well packaged. All the fans actually worked, unlike the uh, previous Millsy version, which we had, which if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you check that out for some history on this. And at the time... This card was somewhere in the region of about £100. This was about six months ago, so yeah, it is a little bit of a change. Basically kind of half price and almost a quarter of the price of what these were brand spanking new. So some of the key features of this, other than the fact that it's just ridiculously cheap and works with PCI Express Gen 3, so if you're rocking a slightly older system or maybe you've got something with integrated graphics like a G-series AMD Ryzen processor, this is going to work really well with it. And for older systems that don't have a particular beefy power supply, all this requires is a single 8-pin PCI Express connector and only takes somewhere in the region of about 115 watts under full load, which is yeah pretty remarkable these days. Something else is remarkable is the actual noise this thing makes. Now, on boot up, when you first turn it on, the fans go into overdrive and it is quite noisy, but as soon as the drivers are loaded, absolutely fine and goes into like a silence mode. So if this is under 50 degrees Celsius, the fans won't spin. And the highest recorded temperatures I found on this under benchmarking was somewhere in the region of about 65 Celsius. So that is actually pretty cool. And even so, the fans only spin about 1800 RPM, so not overly noisy. Not entirely silent, but uh, yeah, a pretty decent compromise for the size of the card. And talking of the size of the card, it is somewhat of a beast. It is almost a three slot card. It does overhang the second slot a little bit. So you will need to check your system, make sure there's enough physical room to fit it in. For some micro ATX or ITX boxes, you may struggle a little bit due to this slightly chunky boy. Some of the size is actually made up from the heat pipe. So it's a dual heat pipe system with a, a reasonable heat sink. You also got the two fans on here, which actually yeah, work very well. Something I'm not entirely keen on are the red accents on there, but a Sharpie or Stanley knife will soon get rid of those should you disagree with the looks. On the side, it's a pretty plain affair, so you've just got the entry point for your 8-pin PCI Express connection for the actual power. And the back plate, very nice, very solid metal, really nicely done, and actually quite easy to take apart. You've got six screws, plus an additional two at the back here, and then you can pull the whole thing apart to see what's inside. And it does reveal some Samsung RAM, all new heat pads and paste, so no need to repaste these things, unlike if you bought a second-hand version, which would cost you potentially actually even more. Something slightly odd I noticed about this, generally the 580s and 570s generally tend to have more connectors on the back, so maybe an extra DVI or something, whereas this has only got a single HDMI and two display ports. So still fine for multi-monitor support, and again, this is only a £50 card. So essentially a cracking little card for somewhere in the region of about £50 from AliExpress. Again, you are going to have to take into account that it may not arrive, it may arrive late, or may potentially end up damaged. But I think for the money, if you're going to buy one of these, use PayPal. Make sure you're nicely covered for all eventualities if it does actually get damaged. And actually saying that, AliExpress has been really good recently. So if you do experience any issues, it's very likely they'll give you a refund or at least a partial refund, depending on the situation. But that's enough of that. Let's take a look at what this thing is actually good for. And that is some good old fashioned 1080p gaming. And we're actually going to throw in a couple of AAA titles in here and also some old favourites so you can get an idea of what this will actually do for you. I've actually tested this with my AM5 system. It works absolutely fine, so the CPU isn't going to be a bottleneck in this particular instance at all. But anyway, let's take a look at the results and see if it's going to do the job for you. 
So starting off with the synthetic, so we've got the Unigine Heaven benchmark. So with this, we're looking at an average FPS of 96.8, and we're looking at 2,439 points. So that is a, a decent reference point, and actually is pretty much exactly where you should find this card. Next up, a AAA title, which has not long been released. This is Dead Island 2, one of my personal favourites. And I wasn't expecting this to actually run at all, or if it did, extremely poorly. But as you can see from the gameplay, I actually kind of got into this a little bit and carried on playing. We're looking at averages of around about 80 FPS. Now we are using 1080p medium here, and we do have a little bit of FSR going on. So we're using FSR balance mode. And actually, I can't tell the difference. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It plays very smoothly. And yeah, I was very, very surprised for what is effectively a £50 graphics card. Next up, a game which is actually quite demanding to run if you crank up the settings. This is Fortnite with all the latest enhancements, and this is running at 1080p. And I've set it to the auto settings, which is kind of dialed in high settings, not the highest. There is some scaling going on, but I think again, it looks absolutely great. We're looking at averages around about the 80 FPS mark, and we do get dips and spikes. Lowest recorded was around about 60 FPS, and maxing out about 100, 110. So a very fluid experience, and even with pretty much most of the eye candy on, you can see things such as the highlights, sunsets, etc. The shading all looks really nice, and it plays very smoothly. No real stutters or anything. Very, very pleased indeed. Just so you can get an idea of what this will be like, so if you want to run Time Spy yourself on your own system, you can see what you get. But with this particular card in Time Spy, we're looking at 3,532 points for the GPU, and 3,965 points overall. Again, this is not really top in the charts in terms of what you can get out of an RX 580, but certainly is good enough. Next up, we're going to take a look at a bit of a favourite as well, CSGO. Now, actually, I thought I'd let this stretch its legs a little bit, so we're actually playing CSGO at 4K. Now, we've got the uh, high setting, so everything is cranked up to the max, so this is basically as much as you can get out of CSGO. And actually, surprisingly, it runs really nicely. So we're looking at 60 to 120 FPS pretty much throughout, Averaging around about the 80 to 90 FPS. There are going to be some dips and spikes here, especially at spawn points, etc. But overall, surprisingly, 4K runs really nicely on CSGO. Something which actually really surprises me out of a graphics card which costs so little. Next up, a slightly older but still a triple A title. Now, this is Cyberpunk, and Cyberpunk actually runs particularly well on this. I was actually very surprised. Game. 1080p, I've got the settings set to kind of medium high, and it's also using a little bit of scaling as well there with FSR set to balance, and we're looking at around about 50 FPS as an average for this, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Obviously, depending where you are, what the crowd density is like, etc., you are going to get dips and spikes, but if Cyberpunk is your thing and you don't have a lot of money, £50 gets you 50 FPS pretty much all the time. So after Cyberpunk, something completely different. Now we're going to take a look at Rocket League. Now this is also Rocket League running in 1080p, high settings. This is pretty much the dialed in settings that the game has set for itself. And we're looking at somewhere in the region of about 180 FPS. So very fluid, very playable. And actually, I think it looks really nice as well. We've got most of the eye candy turned on. Motion blur is turned off, as you'd expect, because nobody really likes motion blur. Not even sure why they even add it on these days. But still, very playable, very enjoyable. I had a really good time with this, again, this is absolutely stunning for this card. Next up, a slightly newer entry. This is something which uh, I basically don't play and have not played, but it has been requested, so I've added it into the list. So this is War Thunder. And this is a kind of uh, war game, obviously, as you expect from the title. And currently we're in a tank and doing things which I'm not entirely sure, crashing into things mostly. I actually believe this is more of an NVIDIA title than it is an AMD one, but still runs really nicely. 1080p high settings, or auto high and we're looking at averages around about 120 FPS. And last on the list for today, we've got Wreckfest, again, another favourite of mine, and this is 1080p, high settings. Again, £50 gets you roughly 50 FPS, although in some particularly congested areas, especially when you start a race, you may find there's going to be some dips. I think that is pretty much universal across all graphics cards on this title. But when you actually get into the thick of things and you're playing the game, you're going to be looking at somewhere between sort of 60 to 80 FPS. So yeah, a wild spread between around about 50 and 100 FPS overall, but certainly very playable and looks absolutely great. 
So there you go, there's some examples of gameplay on various different titles and uh, yeah, very different niches and genres there. But overall, I think this is absolutely cracking. It looks like it's absolutely brand spanking new. They've done a very good job of refurbishing these. If in fact they are refurbished, I'm not entirely sure what they've done with them. It appears, I'm guessing, that it's gonna be an older chip soldered onto a newer board, but who knows. Essentially, it is a brand new in terms of production card. Looks really good, plays really well, and costs very, very little. So massive shout out again to Ugly Bob for sending this over to us. I've actually had a real blast on this. I think this is where PC stuff is actually heading at the moment. With everything getting really expensive, motherboards, processors, graphics cards costing basically a kidney, it's really, really refreshing to actually find a graphics card for somewhere in the region of like 50 pounds. Again, gonna be depending pretty much on your exchange rates and postage where you live, etc. But for us in the UK, you should be able to get this with the VAT tax, etc. for about 50 pounds, which yeah, is absolutely brilliant. It allows you to play 1080p gaming at modest settings, very enjoyable. And yeah, if you're getting into computing or just maybe you wanna flip a system, I think this is definitely worth a look a much better experience than my previous one with the Millsy one, even though effectively it's exactly the same graphics card. Anyway, that's another story. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button and the chime button to be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.